It is all messy. So messy. Bye to feed the bears. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Tech once again, coming at you with another mining video. Today, we're taking a look at the Ethereum hash rate for the RTX 3070. Later on down the road, we will have some more algorithms coming. So if you're interested in those, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And without further ado, let's hop into it starting things off what we have here specifically is going to be the evga xc3 black gaming launch edition there you go that is a mouthful and for the most part it's going to be the same as most other 3070s you're going to have 5888 cuda cores with a 1725 megahertz boost clock on the core you're gonna have eight gigabytes of GDDR6 with a 256-bit bus, and that is gonna be 448 gigabytes per second for memory bandwidth, which is gonna be kind of the, the things you wanna take a look at primarily when mining is gonna be the memory performance. So that all looks pretty good. Your minimum requirements for a power supply, it states they're gonna be 650 watts. Now, of course, uh, that's gonna be a little bit different for mining, and we'll be getting into how much power consumption is on that here in just a second. And it has two available eight pin or six plus two pin PCIe uh, powers. It doesn't use the new 12 pin on the EVGA model here, which is kind of nice. So if you just already have the eight pins available, you're not going to have any worries there. And the TPD or <laughs> total power draw is going to be 220 watts. But of course, we're going to be taking a look at that right now. The test bench that we're on is going to be an R5. There we go. Ryzen R5. 5600X, and that is going to be paired with 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Neo memory clocked at 3600 megahertz with an NVMe drive and the miner running off of a hot swappable SSD, just the regular SATA SSD. And that pretty much covers it. It is water-cooled. We go over the test bench in plenty of other videos. You can check those out later if you're interested in the individual parts. The cooling solution is going to be the ICX3 cooling. It's pretty similar to previous um, EVGA cooling options. You got a three fan design and it does have that weird cutout on the PCB, but the PCB is extended compared to the reference model primarily to accommodate for the dual eight pins and not needing to use a, the 12 pin adapter as the reference models do or also the higher end uh, 3080s and 3090s as well without further ado on that let's get into the numbers so i kind of have uh, afterburner already up here uh, just to show you guys pre overclock and then post overclock and then we will have a little bit of, of a conversation about that so Let's hop into the miners. We're going to be using the latest Phoenix miner 5.2D and we are going to be mining to ether mines. So let's get that up and running. Okay, so right out of the box stock, you're talking about around 50 mega hash a second at 203 watts. Not very good. And let's go ahead and try to confirm that with the kilowatt here. So popping over here right now you can see that we have a total system a power draw of around 310 to 320 watts and if we stop mining kaboom we now drop down to 130 to 140 watts so once again we're gonna go ahead and start the mining again so you can see the power consumption go up as we start applying. So yes, it's right around the 200 watts as confirmed by the kilowatt. So we're gonna go ahead and go off the kilowatt numbers and say around 203 watts stop. But that's not the total story now, is it? Because we have overclocking to accommodate for this and let's hop into my overclock settings that you can check out here in MSI Afterburner. So getting MSI Afterburner up, we are going to apply my overclock profile that I've found set uh, to be the best option after playing with this for probably a, a three to four weeks now at this point. 
and you'll see here we've turned the power limit down to 70 and we've turned the memory clock up to 1200. If we apply this now, we're gonna take a look at the clocks and the hash rates. Alrighty, so you can see that we have both increased the hash rate and decreased the power consumption. And right now we're sitting right around 60 mega hash a second. And as far as the GPU power, we've dropped about 50 watts from 203 watts to 153 watts. Now there might be some additional tuning that we could do. Please let me know. I have messed with core clock, etc. But this is the overclock that we have right now. And we can confirm that, of course, with the kilowatt here for you guys to check out. We are sitting around 260 watts and minus, of course, the 130 on the core, or sorry, on the total system power draw. So if we take that away, we're around 130 watts. Now, how does that add up to the rest of the GPUs on our list? Let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. So if we give it the best edge that we can and cl clock it in at 130 watts, you'll see here that the RX 6800 is 63 mega hash a second at 105 watts. The 5700 XT is 56 mega hash a second at 120 watts. Of course, if you, depending on the memory type and the overclock you got, most people can get that around 100 watts. Same, you know, we have the best overclocks in for the 6800 as well. Right now it sits around 125 watts when not under bolted. You can check that video out up in the corner if you're interested in the overclocking for the RX 6800. The 5600 XT is 42 mega hash at 117 watts and the 5500 XT is 27 mega hash at 88 watts. So wrapping things up, is the RTX 3070 the next big thing for GPU mining? Well, not really. And unfortunately, this entire new release of GPUs hasn't delivered us anything crazy outside of the RTX 3080, where you can get a presumable uh, 100 mega hash a second, which I have yet to confirm on my own. We we're supposed to have one in this week, so check back on the channel uh, for the mining performance on that, of course. Is it profitable? Yes, it's definitely still profitable to mine on your RTX 3070. Uh, so, you know, if they buy it for gaming and you want to mine on it in the meantime, I highly recommend it. You can check out some Ethereum how to mine videos on this channel as well and stop by the Discord if you have any questions. And so that pretty much wraps it up. 61 mega hash at 130 watts. It'll get the job done. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. I'll see you next Tuesday.